This is the world of the campus vets. I need help with these cats. Okay. <laughs> when you hear tumor in the lung, you always think that's the end, that it's deadly. We need to, you know, get on this right away and remove it. If it gets any bigger, then it's a big, big, big problem. Western College of Veterinary Medicine, students learn to treat the health problems of animals even when their patients are less than cooperative. Um, oh, excuse me. I have two kitties, uh, Sarah and Winston, that are here for some dental work. Winston's a lovely kitty. He loves to be cuddled. That's okay. Sarah's 12 years old. She's rather um, the queen at home, so things generally have to be done her way. They're a delight, you know. Without them, I, it would be very sad in my home. Sarah. Hey, hey. Sarah, hey, hey, hey. No, Sarah. Both of Darlene Bracken's cats have the same problem, tartar buildup and a few diseased teeth. Tomorrow, they're booked for dental work. In the meantime, student Jenny Skiffick needs to make sure the cats are in good enough shape to handle anesthesia. I need help with these cats. Okay, like, I need a tech to hold them down. Winston is up first for his exam. It won't be long before the fur really starts to fly. Jerk sometimes. <laughs> Woo! Come here, me. Okay, bud, come here. Come on. Come on, bud. Her rabbit may be a handful, but Jamie Lee is devoted to her pet, especially now that he's sick. Sneezing noises, like he'll just go. Pff, pff. A couple times last week, he had these kind of little fits where he was pushing at his nose, and I'm just afraid he's got some yeah, respiratory my. problems. Here we go. So it's off to the veterinary college for the sick rabbit. Let's go sit down. Good boy. Come on. Let's take your coat off. Schnaufer is in for the fight of his life. Owner Julie Ling noticed her little schnauzer had a strange cough. Many tests later, her local vet confirmed eight-year-old Schnaufer as lung cancer. When you hear tumor in the lung, you always think that's the end, that it's deadly. I figure we'll do whatever we can to save him. Schnaufer is at the college to see if his lung tumor is operable. Okay. He is my child. This little one is special. Let me give a kissy. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, He'll need a little boost. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Go. Take good care of my little guy. Bye-bye. She's willing to do what she needs to do in order to give him a few extra months of happy life. Um, and that's what we're trying to do for him. Student Lauren McDonald examines chest x-rays with medical imaging expert Dr. Chuck Farrell. If the cancer is spread, they can't operate. And you can see there's this sort of whiter area here, and that's the actual mass in the, in the chest. From the x-rays, it doesn't appear the tumor has spread. But ultrasound will provide a closer look. We're checking for any spread of the tumor um, and just making sure that the organs look normal and okay so he'll be okay for surgery. None of Schnaufer's other organs show signs of cancer. Julie hopes surgery will buy Schnaufer some more time. No matter what life throws at him, he's happy and he just loves people and uh, he's my little everything. Cats can be a handful. It's a lesson student Jenny Skiffick is about to learn the hard way when she goes to weigh in Winston. They can be dangerous when they're scared, and that's all it is. He's very scared. I'll forgive him and just be more careful next time. <laughs> Sarah's exam is next. 
but the cat isn't coming out of her crate without a fight. Jenny and staff veterinarian Dr. Milham go for the element of surprise. Okay, ready? bit and then hopefully in half an hour we can um, evaluate her and examine her. He's here today for some sneezing problems. Yeah, he's been making a funny little <laughs> noise sometimes mm -hmm. and he's had a couple fits where he kind of starts batting at his nose and then a, like a white discharge has come out. Exotics resident Dr. Alana Shrubsole first checks the bunny's heart rate in breathing. He sounds good. His um, heart is going nice and yeah. nice and strong, and his lungs actually sound clear. So okay, good. whatever's going on, I don't think is in his lungs right now. Okay, good. Rabbits have a duct that goes right from their eye to their nose. Do you know this at all? Yeah. It's called the nasolacrimal duct. I want to have a look at Beatrice's tear ducts because I'm concerned that they might be blocked. Sometimes they can get uh, a bunch of mucus or buildup just from the eye stuck in there. So I'm going to see if I can flow some saline through from the top of the eye down to the bottom of the nose. So the drops I'm going to put in his eyes are just a, a topical freezing drop. So it'll uh, make it so that he can't really feel when I'm trying to put the, the catheter into his duct. Okay. What comes next is an eye-opening experience. Surgery is underway to remove a cancerous lung tumor from eight-year-old Schnaufer. The mass is right here, and I can push it forward and up, so it's quite sizable. This nice pink stuff, that's normal lung, and you can see when they take a breath that the lung is going to expand. X-ray and ultrasound results show no sign of the cancer spreading, but the surgical team won't know for sure until they get a good look inside. The bigger the mass is, the more we're worried about it being attached to other structures that we can't remove. What we're trying to do is just free up the lung mass itself so we can remove it from the chest. Resident Dr. Lori McDougall works to separate the tumor from the surrounding tissue. It's almost free when she comes up against a big problem. But it looks like it's attached to the front part of the back lung lobe, and then hopefully we don't have to remove that back of the lung lobe. Schnaufer can live without the one lung lobe that is part of the existing tumor. Losing two lobes would create breathing difficulties for the dog. Next. It's time to get out the cat bag. He doesn't look dangerous, but Winston has already sent one student to the hospital with bite wounds. <laughs> bite? My blood? <laughs> my arm? Winston's sister, Sarah, is just as fierce when frightened. The exam gets off to a rocky start for faculty veterinarian, Dr. Lin. <laughs> They'll have to sedate Sarah for her exam, if they can just catch her. It's just called a cat bag. And what it does, you know, with cats like these, it's got uh, zippers in it. So if we need to sedate him and he's quite vicious, we can try and find a leg or... So we just need to find where his head is. Once Sarah is sedated, it's time to let the cat out of the bag. Let's see what your teeth look like. Looks like we're sitting at 39. As soon as Sarah and Winston have passed their physical exams, they'll be set for their dental cleaning and checkup. So this is our little bunny wrap. Dr. Shrubsole prepares to flush a solution down Beatrice's tear ducts. If it comes out the rabbit's nose, the ducts are clear. If it backs up, the ducts are clogged. 
So I got the catheter into the deck. The fluid, which is just sterile saline that I'm pushing through, came back out, so uh, there's a chance that this side might be clogged. Okay. The procedure seems more painful to owner Jamie Lee than to the bunny. A freezing solution has dulled any sensation in Beatrice's eyes. He really plugged up? <laughs> he is really plugged up, yes. Probably what happened is uh, something happened that stressed him out a little bit, and so this uh, bacteria, you know, took hold of their upper respiratory tract, okay. and then that's what caused a little bit of a, an infection and all that kind of mucoid material, and then that right now is what's sitting in there getting clogged up. What I'd recommend for him is okay. at home, if you could take a warm, wet washcloth, some kind of hot pack, and just apply some, some of that heat and that pressure kind of right on the side of his nose. Okay. Um, and then after you do that, just massage it a little bit and that should help break up that material. If he can just relax enough for me to do it two or three times a day, I'm sure by the time we go back next week, it'll be fine. Schnaufer the Schnauzer is in surgery for lung cancer. Resident Dr. Lori McDougall succeeds in removing the tumor from Schnaufer's lung lobe. So there's your mass. But separating the tumor has left small tears in the healthy tissue. What I'm going to try and do is suture over those to try and seal them up rather than sacrificing his lung lobe because we can't really afford to do that. The fluid will tell us where they have a leak. It's like if you have um, a hole in your tire and you put it under water and try and see where the bubbles are coming from. So this is um, gel foam, and basically we're going to stick that over the hole and suture it in place to try and create a seal. Looks better. Dr. McDougall is satisfied, and she closes up. Come on, come on, that boy. Norm Greer is as attached to his two favorite mules as they are to each other. They're inseparable. They have to be together, it seems like. Otherwise, they're not happy. Here, where's your partner, hey? Did you lose her? <laughs> yeah, she's out there. She'll be okay. Get over, that boy. Rusty and his sister Rosie share the same mother, but have different fathers. A mule is a cross between a donkey and a horse and the donkey has to be male, and the horse has to be female. You'll get a mule. The two mules are local celebrities, performing at community events around town, but their days in the spotlight may be in jeopardy. Recently, Rusty developed a sore on his ear that has Norm very concerned. Well, I'm hoping it's just a wart, but I, deep down I know it's something more serious. Not a boy. Oh, we're heading up to the university grounds today, the vet college. They're going to go have a look at them today and uh, see what the prognosis is. Coming up, Winston is looking forward to his appointment with the dentist. From the cat bag to the cat box, Sarah is getting sedated to remove tartar from her teeth. The cats have already made their mark on Jenny. Uh, Winston, he got his teeth into me on this side. So I went to the doctor, I was concerned about infection, and it's inflamed today. So I'm on antibiotics now for seven days. <laughs> and like most animals, when they're afraid, they attack. So Winston bit and scratched, and so did Sarah, so. So you can see here, these teeth, there's some yellow discoloration, and there's actually chunks of tartar. So right now I'm just going to chip off the tartar, the bigger chunks. You can see just like that. Meanwhile, Sarah's brother Winston is waiting in the wings for his turn at the dentist. Julie Ling arrives to pick up her dog Schnaufer. Today she finds out if her pet is cancer free, now that the lung tumor has been removed. We're going to be sending him home now, so he's going to go meet mom. Hey, big guy, you want to go home? Schnaufer! Hi! He's a mommy. Hi, baby! Hi! Are you going to go home? Yeah. Oh. When I got the news that he was, 
he survived the surgery and he was doing fine. Big relief. I'm so happy to have him back. And the thing was, he looked much better than I expected him to look. The lab results are in, and Schnaufer appears to be cancer free. Chances are we haven't bought him in three years with the surgery. A really good case scenario would be we bought him a year, good quality time. He's a good boy. He's happy, and they took out the tumor, and I'm hoping for the best for my little boy. Yes, good boy. So everything's been going well with Beatrice? Yeah, look at that. Beatrice is coming back today for a repeat nasolacrimal flush. We're going to make sure that the ducts are not blocked. The owner's been doing hot compresses at home, and we're going to see how well that's worked. Once Dr. Shrubsole numbs the eyes with a freezing solution, she goes to work. Some of the saline came out through the bottom of his nose. So that's good. So now we'll do the other side. So both sides are clear. Yay! Yeah, it's Great. awesome. So That's good. <laughs> it's very good. The prognosis is good, and he shouldn't be bothered by it anymore. Sarah and Winston's time in the dentist chair is almost up. Their diseased teeth have been pulled, and the healthy ones cleaned, polished, and rinsed of tartar. Now they're nice and white. They'll gradually wake up, um, probably take about two hours before they're fully awake. And if all goes smooth, they'll be back to their frightened selves in a couple of hours. Norm Greer has brought four-year-old Rusty to the college after discovering a suspicious-looking growth on the show mule's right ear. This is what worries me. It's these little spicules on the edge there that kind of tells me that it's trying to grow. Intern Dr. Tammy Orban recognizes the bump as a sarcoid, a type of growth that can develop into cancer. Because of experience with tumors and sarcoids in general, I knew what it was. The main concern was I just wanted to know if it was getting bigger. There is a, a viral component to this lump, and so if the body's able to fight that, then there is a possibility that it will regress. Norm is told there are two options, freeze it off and risk leaving a white scar on Rusty's black coat, or leave it and see if the mule's immune system will cause it to regress. You know, when you uh, take them out to parades, you feel pretty proud when, when they're all shined up and uh, looking good. And, you know, if you have something that's missing an ear, it's, it's not quite as nice to show off, I guess, to the public. Watch those very closely. Okay. Because if those got any bigger, then we know that his immune system isn't commenting it as much, and we'll have to take another action. Okay, maybe we'll do that then. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll monitor it, and mm -hmm. if uh, it looks like it's getting any worse, we can, or larger, we can. If it grows anymore, we need to, you know, get on this right away and remove it, simply because if it gets any bigger, then it's a big, big, big problem. Coming up, the tartar cats go home. I heard that their behavior was a little um, eccentric. <laughs> Rusty is back on the farm. It's been a few weeks since he was diagnosed with a sarcoid, a growth that can turn into cancer. It hasn't stopped the mule from doing what he likes best, pulling the cart with his sister, Rosie. I use them mainly around the, the acreage here for my friends, uh, for sleigh rides, hay rides, just enjoying them. That's okay. Owner Norm Greer has been on the lookout for any change to the coin-sized bump on Rusty's right ear. Just easy. If it looks like it's going to get any worse, just we'll take them in and then they'll treat it. The only negative is, is the hair around that spot would turn white, but I could live with that if, if, if he's completely healthy. For now, it appears Rusty's immune system is fighting the foreign growth. More time will tell. Just easy. Well, I'm really excited because I'm picking up my two kitties from their dental uh, surgery, Sarah and Winston. Darlene Bracken is back for her cats. But first, 
Jenny will have to entice the fractious felines back into their cage. So I'm going to throw some leather gloves on and I'm going to try and make this as stress-free as possible. For who? Everyone. <laughs> I heard that their behavior was a little um, eccentric. <laughs> I'm just going to put the kennel in front of Sarah and hopefully she'll walk in on her own. They don't generally bite people, no. They're very protective of themselves. Hi, Winston. There's your cow. This has been an exciting experience. So we got both of them in, and nobody got hurt this time, so we'll go speak to mom. <laughs> I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, you guys look so lovely. I'm going to take them home. <laughs> and they'll be so excited about getting out of the cage. Some catnip, some soft food, and some cuddles, so it'll be awesome. Just relax. Come here. Come on, buddy. Oh. Come on. KB. Come here. Sometimes he'll come up and he'll be nice and cuddly. Oh. And other times, he won't come near you. Please, I'm trying to help. <laughs> come out. 